What's happening, guys? Welcome to another episode of CAD Monday. Now, I'm away from my house right now, away from my shop, and uh, I've been cramming long hours. But I didn't want to skip a Monday morning CAD video because even though not as many people watch them, um, I think eventually maybe it helps somebody out, maybe it helps somebody now. I committed to keep doing them, so for the time being, until I run out of ideas, I think I probably will. But uh, do me a favor before we get going here, this will be a little bit of a different video. Some pointers, some ideas. You know, I'm sitting in the shop and let me show you some stuff here. But uh, do me a favor, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, click the button. Um, like the video, leave me a comment, give me some feedback, do the whole YouTube thing. And uh, let me show you a couple of things here because this is the perfect place for me to explain it. So I don't think most people that are watching the videos have a table or they're new to tables. Most people that have them are going to know a lot of what I'm explaining. Um, but if you're trying to learn how to program things on your own, you're trying to learn how to program your parts. I mean, we can look up at this wall here. We got a random wall of stuff and I've, uh, I've had my hands into a lot of the parts that are up on the wall there. And it seems out of reach to a lot of people because if you don't have access to this tooling, you never consider using it. And it can be a valuable resource. Um, it seriously changed the way that I build things when I had access to a table and it could work for you too. Um, I generally don't cut brackets by hand. I cut my axle brackets. I've cut disc brake conversion kits. I've cut steering arms, seat belt harnesses, seat mounts, you name it. And I will cut it out on the plasma table before I will cut it out by hand, unless I'm in an absolute pinch because it comes out cleaner. It's reproducible. And in the long run, when you actually figure out consumables, it's cheaper. But for somebody that isn't already doing this. Let's say you're watching this video right now and you're considering learning how to program so you can send files off to somebody. What do you look for? Take my buddy at Dustin at Backdoor Fab here. Now he owns a small fab shop, works on a lot of four wheel drives, getting into hot rods, all kinds of cool stuff. He's done gates and railings and arts and signs. Um, if it can be cut, he's probably cut it and Basically, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what it is. It doesn't matter if he's, you know, cutting out his own logo and he puts it in his headache rack. You know, we've got radius arm with coil spring brackets, adjustable coil buckets, leaf spring perches, U-bolt plates. That's a Toyota axle truss. It's a 22RE exhaust flange. Lots of shock tabs and stuff. Another axle truss here. Um... It's all the same when it comes off the table. It doesn't really matter what it is. Um, but if you start looking in Instagram, Facebook Marketplace, look for guys that are marketing this kind of stuff. I guarantee you there are people in the area that have tables. And I mean, these guys, Fast Cut CNC, follow the table manufacturers. These guys will share when they serve tables and where people are located. And if you reach out to these companies, they may even be able to tell you who in the area has a table because most home hobbyists will cut parts for you and if you're stuck they can also they can also help you program your parts i mean this is what they do um every day they fire them up they burn out bits and pieces you know this pe these pieces here are the pieces that i use to finish up my planishing hammer the handle for my bead roller um, it was an idea. It was a quick file. I burned them out on the table. I had parts in two and a half minutes. Like it's that quick. I couldn't have turned this out by hand and I couldn't have done it with the accuracy. One of the other advantages is also something like this part here. This is a universal axle truss, uh, front plate, rear plate. It's got lower plates. It's got internal ribs. It's set up for brackets. Now, a lot of the stuff I program, it gets keys and slots. It gets tabs on the joints. It's made so that you can weld it. And when you grind down the weld, you can, pull, you can blend these out 
and you're not losing the strength of the weld. Um, it's one of the big things that I like to program into parts. I build lots of stuff with tabs, slots, keyways, um, bend slots. I'll show you those in a minute. Um, this opens up huge doors because instead of having to jig this up, this piece will basically stand up on its own. Once it's cleaned up straight off the table, you can pre-assemble this with maybe a half dozen tack welds. And this whole piece will sit up just like that so that you can put it on a car. Which in the case of my bead roller, you can see it here with tabs and slots. These are all spots where it was welded through. You can see the tabs on the top. Everything keys into place, it all locates. This makes assembly so much easier on a complicated part. You can add internal structure and on something like this, if you were to pre-assemble the ribs in here, you could weld the ribs on one side without the other side on, but you couldn't weld the other side. So it just doesn't have the strength unless you have all this showing through. And if we go back to the wall, you can see the slots on that piece there. That's a uh, upper link bracket kind of thing you put on the inside of a frame. We use them a lot in off-road vehicles so that we've got adjustable anti-squat. We can tune in the geometry. Now those slots there, if you put that in a vise, you see this leaf spring perch here, it had similar slots. You put it in a vise, put a crescent wrench on it, fold it over. Same thing with that coil bucket. Um, this makes for parts that you can get flat. You don't have to worry about tacking them up. You can literally bend them over. You can put these in the car without even tacking pieces together because they come off the table as one piece. And once you've got access to a table, whether it's yours, it's somebody else's, it just opens doors. Like these axle stands are a game changer. Uh, dire Non-directional casters on the bottom, bolt onto the wheel. Um, these ones... We even put bolt holes here so they're on a solid axle. You could put a crossbar on, you could bolt things on there. You've got a tray for parts. You could set it basically at ride height in this case or set it way down on the floor. And you can just spin this whole truck around with one hand on a nice smooth concrete floor that's so much nicer than the gravel that I'm currently working on. But this is something we put together for his truck that he sells out of the shop. And it's something that if you take the time and you program it or you work with a guy with a table, you can build something like this. Now, it doesn't matter if it's a hot rod, a four-wheel drive. It really doesn't matter what it is. You can build them for bolt patterns. You can build them different heights. You can do whatever you need to. It totally changes how you build things. This comes off the table in eh, about 10 minutes. If you were cutting this out with a grinder, a drill press, figuring it all out, building one of these would take the better part of a day. And, of course, you're not limited by material. Um, I love wandering around the shop because it reminds me of stuff we've worked on over time. Um, this was actually a tool caddy. It's specifically designed to sit up on top of about a four, you know, 38 to 40 inch tall tire. Just sits up on top of the tires so that when you're working on your four wheel drive, You've got tools, parts. A lot of these trucks that we work on don't have inner fenders. They don't have spots like that. You want everything nice and handy. As long as you're not rolling the truck around, these are perfect. And again, if this is something that you're designing yourself, it's an easy file to work on if you got access to a table. And you know what? If you don't, you find guys with tables and you look stuff like this up, there are a lot of guys that have files just like this that can help you out. Or they can help you design it. Or you can follow my videos and follow along, design your parts, hit up guys with tables, and uh, you can make something like this yourself. Now where it starts to get even cooler is that, uh, you know, CNC plasma table is one thing. Everybody's seen mills and stuff. This is actually a CNC tubing cutter, uh, Bentec Dragon. Now this is an animal of a machine. We've started playing with this. Basically... It's covered up with a blanket because we've been working in here, but there's a drive motor that runs here. It feeds it through here. Plasma torch comes down and you can see it just, it notches all of your tube Sharpie on there. If you're building a roll cage, a subframe, anything like that, you can actually cut your tubes and that marker will mark the beginning of your bend points. You can run it all in the software with that comes with the dragon um 
you can cut tabs and slots into tubes so things key together we've even cut words into them um you're not limited by flat surfaces and when you start hitting up guys i mean dustin's shop is a small two-car garage basically well maybe a large two-car garage um equipment like this is starting to become more and more accessible and when it's more and more accessible to guys with their shops that means it's more and more accessible to you even if you don't want to own it yourself now i can scan around this shop there are buckets there are parts there's stuff everywhere the tool holders on the wall all came off the cnc plasma um, we're actually going to burn out a brand new tube bender right away um, there is stuff literally everywhere. Every vehicle that rolls out of here ends up with something off the table because why not? You know, you decide you want new jack stands. Maybe I'll do that in a video one day, program some adjustable jack stands. Um, it's endless. The possibility we'll go over to this corner here. That is part of a winch mount um that'd be the fair lead mount on the front there um there's absolutely no limit to what you can build when you're doing something like this and obviously the video that comes out wednesday will show off these bead rollers i've showed them in a previous bead or in a previous video along with my english wheel having access to this kind of tooling i could program all of this now if you had designed these bead rollers yourself you could send these files out to somebody with a table, you could assemble them just like this. I mean, you can build your parts, you can build your tools. You could sit down and build yourself a fab table, mark out your whole bolt pattern, use the table to cut the holes. No, it's not precision ground, but you could go to somebody with a CNC plasma table. I think this is a three by six table. Have them cut out the holes, grab a reamer, ream them out yourself, weld them down to a top, and you've got a fab table that you can use for just about anything. Um, I, I, what I'm trying to get at is just that the sky is the limit. There's no ending to what you can do when you have access to these tools. Turn the corner and find more. I mean, this is a paper towel holder, key rack, sits inside the door. Why? Because he can, you know? There doesn't really need to be any better reason than that. And really all I'm trying to do today is to open up people's eyes a little bit. Think about the possibilities. I mean, you can follow this video around the shop. You can see the same stuff that I'm looking at. And I mean, this is stuff that I've been doing for 15 years plus. Um, we've been making parts for everything forever. Now, I, I want people to be able to do that. I want them to be able to build the skills, to be able to build their vehicles. You know, if it was light out, I could walk to the front of this house and show you the art piece that's under his eaves with birds and trees and bears and this beautiful scenic silhouette that's attached to the side of the house. We've done house numbers. We've done railings. We've done entire fence panels and brushed aluminum, you know, you can do just about anything with this stuff. And if you start searching for hashtags, search for plasma cutters, search for guys building trucks, ask them where they get their parts. If you start looking for guys, I guarantee you, if you go on Instagram, Facebook, join the groups, follow hashtags, do all that stuff, reach out to the manufacturers, do all of this stuff. You will find the people that can help you out. And if you need pointers for programming that stuff, hit me up. If it's something I can help with, I will help you out. I will do a video. I think that the entire hobby grows when we share this knowledge. And at the end of the day, that's what we want. This is uh, stuff that we want to pass down to our kids, our grandkids. We want the entire culture to succeed. And honestly, I have a blast doing these videos. And I know this one isn't exactly what everybody showing up might expect. You know, maybe you're disappointed or maybe this is better than what I usually do on Monday. But either way, this is what I'm putting up. So uh, if you picked up anything useful, you know, if you enjoyed the couple of minutes of me rambling around my buddy's shop, like the video, drop me a comment, give me some feedback. Do the whole YouTube thing. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. If you found this boring, 
check in Wednesday. We're going to take a look at these tools before I get out of the shop. And, uh, at the end of the week, we're going to be back at home and I'm going to be working on my car and I got cool stuff to work on it again. Plus I'm cutting out the parts for my intake manifold and my exhaust manifolds for the twin supercharger motor to go into the rat rod. I got a bunch of other stuff I got to cut as well. So I'm going to be bringing all that back, start putting it together when I get home. But, uh, yeah, if you made it all the way through, thanks for checking it out and, uh, I'll see you on the next one.